How's it going everyone? Welcome to nomenclature number three. In this video, we're going to focus on substituents that aren't alkane chains, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys the name of a compound and have you draw it out. As always, feel free to pause the video, give it a try, and then see how you did. Let's get started. So in this first example, we're going to start off by counting the parent chain, and as always, we want the substituent on the lowest number carbon. We can see that if we start from the right side and we count, That'll give us the lowest number to put the chlorine group on, and it'll be on carbon number three. So when we have a chlorine group, we're going to have it on carbon number three. We're going to call it three chloro, three chloro, and there's six carbons, so it's going to be three chlorohexane. So how about the next example? So on this example, we have chlorine on number carbon number one, but Instead of giving it a number, we're just going to call this chloro. We have, you know, one, two, three, and four carbons. So we're just going to call it chlorobutane. And the reason that we're not going to add a number is, since it's the only substituent and it's on carbon number one, we can assume it's on carbon number one just by calling it chlorobutane. Whenever you see a name like this where you have a substituent group on the parent chain and there's no number in front of it, you can assume it's on carbon number one. So let's go on to the next example. In this example, we actually have two chlorine groups. And if we count, they're on carbons one, two, three, four, and five. So the two chlorines are on carbons number two and carbon number three. So in that case, we're going to call it two, three. We're going to have dichloro, di for two, dichloro, and there's five carbons total, dichloropentane. All right, so this one's pretty much the same one as the last one with just the additional one chlorine. And so we have one chlorine, two, three, and we're gonna count one, two, three, four, and five. So as we name it, we're gonna call it one, two, three, trichloro, and then the parent chain is gonna be five carbons long, so trichloropentane. All right, so for the next example, we're going to have two substituents, but they're going to be different this time. Instead of all chlorines, we're going to have a bromine and a chlorine. As always, count your parent chain with the lowest numbers for the substituents. So we have pentane again. And this time, we're going to have a two-bromo group, because we have a bromine on carbon number two. Two-bromo, three-chloro, pentane. All right, I know I'm moving a little bit fast, but I'm just trying to get to the last example, which is a little bit harder than what we've done so far. So we're going to do this example, and then we'll move on to the last one. So in this example, it's pretty much just like the last one. You have your two, uh, two carbons that have groups on them. We're going to count first. Two, three, four, five, six, seven total carbons. We have two bromines on carbon number two. We have two chlorines on carbon number three. So it's actually going to be pretty similar to the last example, except we're going to add the extra numbers, and we're going to call it dibromo, 3,3, dichloro, always add that prefix, dichloro, and there's seven total carbons, which gives us heptane. Okay, so this example is going to be a little bit different. Normally I give you the structure and I give you, you know, I give you kind of the steps to name it. This time we're going to give you the name and we're going to go through it and we're going to draw it out. So what we got here is we have 2-chloro, 3-3-dimethyl, 4-ethyl, 5-isopropyl, bromocyclooctane. Now at first glance this is kind of a mouthful. I know it looks super, super long, but it's actually not so bad and I'm going to show you why. We're going to start off by breaking this down. So if we look at the very end, we know we have bromocyclooctane. We know that this is going to be our parent chain, specifically the cyclooctane. So we're just going to start off by drawing that first. We're going to start off by drawing cyclooctane. And what does cyclooctane look like? Well, octane is a five car or an eight carbon chain, and cyclo means it's, uh, you know, it's cyclic. So we're just going to draw a cyclic compound with eight total carbons, and that's going to be cyclooctane. Now, what does the bromo mean? Well, 
since it's bromocyclooctane, that tells us that that bromo has got to be on carbon number one. There's no, you know, there's no indication. There's no, there's no number before the bromo, so it's gonna be on carbon number one. So first thing, what we should do is we should actually count our carbons. You know, let's just start here. And it doesn't actually matter at this point. You know, which carbon you are to start with. We're just gonna assign our numbers. Eight total carbons. That way we're oriented. And we're gonna start off. We're gonna start off with the bromo. We're just gonna throw it on carbon number one. So now we got bromo down. So let's let's move on to the second one. So we have two chloro. Well, that just tells us we have a chlorine group, on carbon number two. So that that gives us our two chloro. Now this time we got three three dimethyl. Well, we know what methyl looks like. It's a single carbon, and it says three three dimethyl. That means we have two methyl groups, each of them being on carbon number three. And that's how we can draw that. If you want, you can always add the CH3, you know, if you like to see the carbons, but typically you can just draw the line. So next up we have 4-ethyl, which means we have an ethyl group on 4, and if we remember, ethyl is 2 carbons long, so we'll do 1 carbon, 2 carbons. Lastly, we have 5-isopropyl, and if we remember what isopropyl is, we know that isopropyl is going to be a three carbon compound, but it's going to be isolated. The two, the two carbons at the end will be isolated from each other. Kind of like that, where we have one carbon, two carbon, and three carbon. So if we go back to our drawing and put that on carbon number five, we're going to have one carbon, two over here, and then we'll add another branch to be our third carbon, which gives us our isopropyl group. Now if you look at the entire thing, you can see that we have 2 chloro, 3 3 dimethyl, 4 ethyl, 5 isopropyl bromo octane, bromo cyclooctane. So it looked pretty it looked pretty long at the beginning, but you can see it's really not so bad now. Anyways, I hope this helped. Watch out for more organic chemistry lecture videos. I believe that the best way to learn organic organic chemistry is to practice, and so I'm going to try to provide you guys with as much practice as you guys can get so that you guys can do as well as you can on your exams. Thanks for watching.